John Fisher, you're not a real estate guy, man. You're not. You've been trying for 20 years. I've seen it do it with Lou Wolf. You failed in Fremont. You failed in San Jose. You failed in Oakland. You can't get it done. You're in Vegas fighting through the Senate, fighting through the Assembly. You're not going to make money in the 44th largest TV market in the country. It's not realistic. If you would put the money into the team here, it is a much more valuable product in Oakland, California than it is in Las Vegas, Nevada with the regional sports network set up. You know it, I know it, you're just looking to flip the team. You want to get the deal, sell it to a Vegas businessman. Sheldon Adelson's dead. You can't sell it to him, man. The back and forth between Oakland A's fans and the unsympathetic commissioner of Major League Baseball, Rob Manfred, has reached the boiling point. What it was like attending the Oakland A's fan reverse boycott. Thousands of fans met outside the Coliseum before the game for tailgating. Each fan was given detailed plans for the night, and thousands of shirts were handed out that read, sell. Oakland A's fans did a reverse boycott with over 27,000 in attendance, imploring their beloved athletics to be sold so they could stay in the Bay. When asked about it, Manfred said, and I quote, it's great to see what is this year almost an average Major League Baseball crowd in the facility for one night. That's a great thing, as Jeff Passan rebutted. This is the sort of comment one might expect from at Rob M. 39592013533. Not the commissioner. With Manfred, it is just another wrinkle in his unimpressive tenure as commissioner, doing his best PR on behalf of the owners to lie through his teeth and place blame on Oakland. And now the fans, as we have sadly seen through repeated history, are the ones who suffer. Let's fact check Manfred. He would go on to say, I understand why they feel the way they do. I think that the real question is, what is it that Oakland was prepared to do? There is no Oakland offer, okay? They never got to a point where they had a plan to build a stadium at any site. My guy, this is categorically false. The proposed multi-billion dollar Howard Terminal project includes a stadium surrounded by residential, office, and retail spaces. The proposed project includes a performance center, hotel, parks, and open spaces. The process to move forward on the proposed Howard Terminal project has been years in the making. There was a proposal with Howard Terminal. Come on. Manfred would also say, the community has to provide support. And you know, at some point, you come to the realization, it's just not going to happen. Brody Brazil of NBC Sports California would provide more insights. What about the $100 million the A's have personally told me that they have spent, they had spent over time, to try and make Howard Terminal work over months. And there were plenty of things that went well and went the right way. There's no plan. How about a certified EIR for the 55-acre site? Land use approvals, things that went to court that were defended legally. When it comes down to it, Rob Manfred was dead set on moving the athletics out of Oakland. John Fisher was just his huckleberry through the whole process. I, I just can't believe that John Fisher refuses refuses to come out and speak well, hiding behind hiding behind really the door I, what a joke I, yeah i am i i he can't come out one time and speak to his A's fans. Who has remained largely silent and has received rightful criticism fisher the son of gap founders donald and doris fisher john is the youngest son who owns 18 percent of gap providing him funding to take ownership of the A's in 2016. Why is John Fisher getting this free pass from Major League Baseball? Why is no one questioning everything going on with this team, starting with what's going on on the field? If I'm an owner of another club, that team is an embarrassment to my industry. He has a history of bad decisions. Environmentalists chained themselves in protest at Gap Stores for his purchase of 235,000 acres in Northern California that they said he would destroy. Mary Bull, spokesperson and activist for the Save the Redwood Boycott Gap campaign, said Gap was the leader of sweatshop exploitation with 300 shops in over 55 countries. If he cuts a deal in Vegas and they really get traction and start to build his net asset value probably doubles, and then he can sell and go, what a smart boy am I? I just think this is nothing more than a net asset valuation play, but there's a gap in his thinking, and that is a long way to go before Vegas 
And he's got a partner in this, DA, and you talked about it. His name is Commissioner Rob Manfred. Andy Dolich, former executive with the A's, Rip Fisher and Manfred on CBS Sports Radio, wrote Alex Coffey around the time the Fishers were getting into the timber industry, Gap Inc., and seven other retailers were sued for human rights violations at their garment factories. The suit, which was filed in 99, alleged the factory workers were required to work overtime without compensation, were subjected to a hazardous work environment, and were subjected to other intimidation tactics such as illegal threats of deportation. The case was settled in 2002, but only after Gap Inc. reportedly attempted to block other retailers from settling. John Fisher has led the charge to explore Timberland because it sounded fun and exciting, but it ended up being a terrible decision that hurt the family's brand and reputation, wrote the San Francisco Standard. During the pandemic, John Fisher was the only MLB owner to not offer his minor league players a $400 a month stipend. $400 only after a ton. And I mean, a ton of pressure. He relented. There was also open secrets discovering Fisher gave $5 million to dark money groups that attacked former president Barack Obama and whose views aligned with the Koch brothers, a graduate of Princeton and a dabbler in Republican politics. Fisher would say, I don't know anything about the investment business, and I don't want to know anything about the investment business. I want to build things. I want to be an entrepreneur, and I want to build businesses or build shopping centers or whatever it may be. With the A's, business as usual. In his tenure as owner, he has kept the A's payroll within the bottom half and frequently the bottom quarter of all 30 MLB clubs, and he has steadfastly tried to secure a new ballpark rather than rebuild the Coliseum. Who's to say Las Vegas is this unbelievable market for baseball? Now, I know football is there, and I know hockey is there. Baseball's different. And is Las Vegas going to be able to support a Major League Baseball team 81 nights a year? And I know tourists will come in, but are they coming in for baseball in the middle of summer? Mm. (laughs) That remains to be seen. So my question, the question I'm raising in this article is why the free pass? Why is John Fisher immune from any criticism internally from MLB, from what I can see, what I can understand? Why has Manfred not been harder on him? Why has he been so accommodating? That's the word I used in the story. Why so accommodating to an owner who has not done well with his team? Manfred, by the way, knows the differences between these two proposals. When it comes to an area, in Oakland, you have 55 acres. In Vegas, you have nine. The stadium capacity in Vegas, 30,000 seats. Will the tone-deaf commissioner be mocking the size of those crowds, asked Ann Killian of the San Francisco Chronicle. By the way, the relocation fee for Fisher, scrubbed completely. Not even a thing anymore. There were also comments from Manfred that have been debunked by sports economists that stadiums simply do not generate significant local economic growth. He barked back that what they found is false imagine the gall to say that and also the unfounded confidence so rob manford once again is proving to be public enemy number one of a great game that he is deteriorating every single year